A very good morning to you colleagues. On behalf of the Director General, Mi Ministry of the Public Service, we are really happy to welcome you to the third in the series of quarterly human resource webinars, the forum where we discuss human resource issues and the development of the human resources of the public service. In our last offering, we examined how the COVID-19 pandemic is currently impacting the human resource landscape. And we talked about the associated effects on the physical and emotional well-being of workers, including human resource professionals themselves. Today's webinar takes a look at the role of managers and supervisors in supporting the well-being and productivity of employees while teleworking through some of the recommendations offered by the International Labour Organization. My name is Sheldine Santwali, Senior Human Resource Officer with the Learning and Development Directorate. Ministry of the Public Service, and I will be your moderator for the session. This webinar is a collaborative production between the Learning and Development Directorate and our sister directorate, Human Resource Policy and Staffing, and facilitated by our guest presenter, Mr. Wayne Sobers. He is the Deputy Director Acting of the Human Resource Policy and Staffing Directorate. Our producer, Miss Laura Taylor, is also in our company. Hi, Laura. Hi, Wayne. Hi, good morning. You can ask our producer to just take our slide forward. Now we'd really like to hear from you and we want, to, we want you to be a part of this conversation. But before we get there, here are some rules of engagement that we want to share with you. We want to encourage you to mute your microphones, disable your video, pause, minimize distractions as much as possible, focus fully on the presentation, reflect on your own experiences, of course, participate, 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 and share what you have learned in the chat. Uh, the session promises to be interactive with time allotted for activities and a question and answer segment. You'll have the opportunity to use the chat box and share your comments. Our team will be monitoring the chat space to share your questions and comments with the facilitator. So let's do some testing and make sure we all know how to navigate our way around the chat. Now it's the, Independence weekend is coming up. Christmas is in the air, right around the corner. So just chat, just type one thing in the chat that you're looking forward to doing this weekend, something exciting. I'm gonna look out for your responses. Something you're looking forward to doing this weekend. It's a long one coming up. Nobody has any plans. Getting some rest, going to church, beach, having lunch with my family. Excellent. Whatever you do, make sure it's a fun thing. Thank you for sharing everybody. At this point, ah, somebody said conkeys. Oh yeah, we can't leave that one out at all. Eating conkeys face says. Cheryl is going to be doing the same thing, making conkeys, getting errands completed. Excellent. Whatever you do, as I said, make it a great one. <laughs> At this point, I'd like to introduce our presenter for today's webinar, Mr. Wayne Sobers. Mr. Wayne Sobers currently serves as Deputy Director acting in the HR Policy and Staffing Directorate of the Ministry of the Public Service. In this role, he advises on the development and implementation of industrial relations policy, practice and conditions of service for the public sector. This includes representing the ministry in matters that require social dialogue with trade unions and staff associations, as well as with other ministries and departments. This role also supervises the policy unit of the directorate to ensure timely and comprehensive analysis of requests regarding conditions of service for public officers. 
Prior to joining the Ministry of the Public Service, Mr. Sobers worked as the Assistant Chief Labor Officer acting at the Labor Department where he served as an advisor on labor legislation and industrial relations practice and as a facilitator in conflict resolution and dispute settlement processes. For many years, he was also a lecturer at the University of the West Indies Cahill campus for the industrial relations course in the undergraduate program. Mr. Sobers has conducted numerous training sessions on labor legislation and employment relations practice for public and private sector organizations, as well as for shop stewards of the Barbados Workers Union. His qualifications include a Master of Science in Human Resource Management from the University of Surrey, and he's a member of the Chartered Institute of Personnel Development UK and the Human Resources Management Association of Barbados. I now invite Mr. Sobers to begin his chat with us. Mr. Sobers? Good morning. Thank you, Sheldine, and thank you to all who, have who are in attendance with us today. We at the HR Policy and Staffing Directorate are indeed very happy for the opportunity to share on this issue of supporting teleworking employees. This topic has assumed greater significance given the many changes that have occurred in the Barbadian work environment. And it is important uh, to the public service we are all aware that students have not yet returned to everyday face-to-face -face classes, and many parents have had to take advantage of the flexible work arrangement policy, which was circulated recently and designed for such a time as this, to enhance work-life balance for public officers while allowing ministries and departments to maintain their services to our customers. While the policy provides for four flexible schedules, our main focus today will be on supporting those officers who are, uh, telework, who are telecommuting. This therefore means that as managers and supervisors, we need now more than ever before to adapt our approaches to managing re remotely. In this regard, we need to take into account the perspectives of workers in relation to the challenges and opportunities of teleworking as it relates to their family and domestic situation, type of role or skills that they possess. So colleagues, the teleworking situation requires a new kind of management, one that is built on mutual trust and is results-based and also features a new type of working arrangement. One that I dare say is more autonomous for the employee, more flexible and better adapted to individual circumstances and preferences of the employee. This brings into focus our management practices and the adjustments that are needed now and in the future. So before we get into our topic, uh, I want you to just take a look for a few moments at the image below, just study it for a few moments and then tell us what do you see? Don't think about it too long, but just tell us what do you see here? Type your response in the chat, please. I will look for your responses. And remember that we look forward very much to your own um, interaction with us. Uh, we think that it will enhance our presentation today. So we have the image. Just, 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 just tell us briefly what you're seeing on this image. Someone says, a mouse looking at some cheese in a trap. He's looking at it. The mouse is proceeding with caution. Keep on coming. Prepar he's preparing for the risks that he's about to take. Interesting, interesting. I see a mouse in a helmet looking at cheese on a mouse trap. Thank you, thank you for your comments. 
I, in, in, in looking at this, this, this individual, whether it takes the physical image of a mouse, I, I see an individual who recognizes that his environment has changed. The objectives, the goals and objectives remain the same. He still has to get that cheese in much the same way that we still have to get um, the, the um, salaries to take care of our, our households, our children and so on. And similarly, we still have to satisfy our objectives. And in, in the same way that he's preparing himself for the circumstances around as he moves, as he approaches his, his target, his goal, we must be likewise prepared for the changing environment that confronts us, accelerated by COVID. Yes, COVID has changed a lot, but really COVID has accelerated a lot of the changes that, um, that we are facing. So this leads us nicely into um, our next point, where we, we point out to you that our discussion today will focus on the tools we need as managers and supervisors to effectively manage our employees who work remotely. This presentation will draw on the contents of a practical guide, which was produced by the ILO on teleworking during the, teleworking during the COVID-19 pandemic and beyond. The guide makes recommendations for ensuring the well-being of workers and their continued productivity while teleworking. These are promoted through a framework which includes the key areas that impact on employee well-being, as well as the performance of individuals and their teams. Now, according to the ILO, the expanded use of telework is unlikely to end with the pandemic, but could well become part of the new and better normal for years to come. And we, you may ask, some of you may ask, well, what is the ILO? Why is the ILO so important? And the ILO is the, the foremost advisor and developer of knowledge and techniques as it relates to employment relations. It is a fully tripartite body and representing 187 countries and allow, has a rigorous system that allows all the par parties to the employment relationship to participate in setting these objectives, making them more realistic and more easy to assimilate for all of the stakeholders. So our objectives uh, for today, by the end of today's webinar, you will be able to explain four focus areas where work arrangements can be adapted in support of employee well-being and productivity while teleworking. I want you to note two main things here for this objective. One, the well-being, and two, the productivity of our employees, because both are important and both must be carried simultaneously. And our second objective is that you will be able to select strategies to promote a positive teleworking experience for our employees. So given that technology will be with us for some time, let us get started with this very important conversation in support of our human resources. So let me ask you, I, I want to, to just get your feedback on a question. Do you currently supervise? Do you currently supervise at least one employee who has a school age child or children and who require supervision with online classes or provides care for the elderly? Do you have, do you currently supervise at least one employee who has school age children requiring supervision with online classes 
or who provides care for an elderly parent. Kindly uh, respond in the chat. You can just use the green arrow to indicate a yes. I will, I will look out for your responses just to give me a better idea of the numbers of persons who may be in this, in this situation. Yeah, so we see a few yeses uh, coming in. So let us then get to our working definition, first of all, of what teleworking is all about. And we should say that while we use the term teleworking, it is also known as telecommunicate, telecommuting, work from home, or remote work. They all mean the same thing, and indeed the, the definitions uh, would coincide. So we say that teleworking refers to the use of information and communication technologies such as smartphones, tablets, laptops, and desktop computers to do work that is performed outside of the employer's premises. And more and more, we see these taking some rather unique forms. Only two weeks ago, I was at the beach and I saw an, a, a parent, an adult come to the beach with two children, set, set up a chair, a nice chair with a, with a roof. And while the children were swimming and enjoying themselves, the adult was using a laptop computer right on the beach. And by the expressions on his face, I doubt very much he was playing games. It looked very much to me as if he was performing work while on the beach. And this is becoming more and more a feature uh, of our environment. In our case, though, many of our, many of our staff will be requiring remote working uh, facility, as we said, primarily to support uh, children who need guidance with their education and maybe dependent relatives in, 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 in this COVID environment. So as we continue, as we continue, let's hear your thoughts. As you reflect on your own workplace and your role, what are some of the issues that confront you as you supervise a public officer who is currently telecommuting? telecommuting? You can um, please put your responses in the chat. We shall look up for them. What are some of the issues that confront you as a supervisor based on the workers uh, among your staff who are currently telecommuting? No one has any staff members. Uh, somebody says complaints from the public. So you're saying that because the employee is, because the employee is aware there's no one to answer the telephone. Anything else? Any other challenge that you may have? An ability to reach the officer in a timely fashion? Officer requires constant supervision adequate measurement and productivity. These are, these are all rather interesting um, responses and hopefully we can help you as we go through this presentation in managing this situation. Today, we will take some time to discuss areas of focus for adaptation of work arrangements for you as managers and supervisors in your role of supporting employee well being and productivity. So, remember, we are talking two things employee well being, uh, employee well being, as well as productivity, because the two must coexist. So, we will focus on working time and work organization which requires, which explores adjustments in the hours of work, the workload, and the conditions under which the work is being, um, the work is being done. 
performance management, because we, the, the, we, we have to perform, performance management, how do we continue to monitor and maintain individual and team performance? Because in some situations, the team and the performance of the team um, would be very important. Communication, communication between the employee and his supervisor, and, the, and his, the employee and the supervisor. So how do we as managers and supervisors effectively communicate while relying on electronic media to foster collaboration, trust, and transparency? And we will also look at training, primarily in terms of the new skills that are required, not only for managers, but also for the person that we supervise in this working initiative. I did mention earlier that we have, we meaning the public service, we do have a policy in place that makes provision for four uh, um, flexible work schedules, four flexible work schedules that may be used individually or any combination. I mentioned the flexible work, but which we are, are, are speaking about more so today, but there's also opportunities for compressed work schedule, staggered hours, and flexi time. So, colleagues, let us focus first on working time and work organization. I want you to note that there is research which has shown that employees working from home tend to work longer hours than when they are working at the premises of the employer. And no, I didn't say all based on some of the comments we had earlier. I'm just saying that this, is a, this happens in many of the situations. And this is due in part to the period previously taken to travel to and from work has generally been replaced by work activities. Employees also tend to work in their free time to meet the demands of work, maybe caused by the blurring of boundaries between paid work and personal life. And this occurs in areas such as uh, performing household chores, the homeschooling and so on. So as managers, we are not only confronted with some team members working from different locations, but also with having to agree on individual working patterns and work schedules to accommodate each employee's care responsibilities. Bearing in mind that we did identify the primary reason for this is the need to provide care for members of, of the household. Now, we are, we are, have a responsibility in this pivotal role in supporting employees and mitigating the potentially harmful impact that overwork may have on the health and well being of employees. So, yes, we need to have the work done, we need to have tasks um, completed and productivity maintained, but we also have to make a, an effort to help the employee to, to distinguish and have clearly defined um, work times and rest times. Some managers and supervisors, we also need to focus greater attention on prior, prior, prioritization of work activities. In essence, we have to assist in clarifying those things which need to be completed uh, as a matter of priority, as a matter of urgency, and if necessary, to realign the, 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 the timeframes for work that is not essential or realistic under the current circumstances. Some tasks will lend themselves very readily to remote work. Others, we may have to be at the office to complete them. Another area is the question of workload task, which essentially is where the supervisor in conjunction with this employee will review the work plans to make sure that the task as well as the deadlines 
are more realistic and therefore more achievable so that a, a, a careful balance can be struck for both parties. Of course, this is not totally new for us in the public service as these are captured in the um, performance management process through the PRDS. So it might be worthwhile to review how we use that process and the tools that are provided within it. Also, by reviewing the flexible, the flexible work arrangements policy, this may also provide further assistance and guidance as to how we may manage the situation. So for instance, the flexible work, work arrangements policy in the um, area that deals with remote work with telecommuting, one of the things that should be agreed up front are the tasks that are going to be performed. So we noted earlier, uh, somebody mentioned uh, being able to find the employee and having tasks performed, but it is not every rule in the public service that lends itself to remote work. So that distinction has to be made. And then once that is done, then before there is sign off on the teleworking arrangement, the tasks and the, the deliverables should be clearly identified. So let me, let me pose another question for you. And again, I'm looking for your feedback in the chat. What strategies could you implement in relation to working time and work organization? What strategies can you consider and implement to assist in this area of work organization and working time? I'm looking carefully for your for your responses. I'm looking carefully for the responses in, in the chat. One entry says submission of weekly reports. So you're going to agree with the employee of an approach to, to, to indicate what has been achieved, what has been completed, have weekly progress meetings, agree on timelines. Useful, all, all very useful and things, uh, things that we need to put in place that we should consider more often. So here are some approaches then. Let me share with you some approaches which may be useful as a response to the challenges uh, that may arise. The, the, as I indicated in the, in the flexible work arrangements policy, one requirement is agreement beforehand. And yes, we, we, we certainly advance that. And we, ask, we, we think it is a good idea to ask the worker to prepare an individual work plan for the period that he is uh, teleworking. This also serves to involve the worker as opposed to giving him a schedule that is handed down. And because the worker participates in the determining the work plan, it helps to ensure commitment. And remember, our objective should always be smart. And so there should be some discussion, some dialogue between the two parties once the worker has submitted his initial proposal so that we can arrive at a consensus. And, and like I said, that will assist in making it more achievable and, and getting his buy-in. We should also clarify what is a priority. And we do know that in this environment, priorities um, will change. And it is very possible that what was a priority yesterday may need to be reprioritized or deprioritized today until uh, because something else is more important. So the communication has got to be there and it has to be to be dynamic based on the circumstances in which we find ourselves. We should also encourage workers to share when they feel over, overloaded 
so that this may serve to us as an early warning sign to detect the risk of burnout and to know when tasks our team members have to be reassigned. So somebody mentioned earlier that we couldn't get the telephones answered, but it may very well be that we have to reassign uh, that, that task. And as you search your experience and as you look at your organization, you may find other workable areas. Another area which must occupy our attention as supervisors and managers is that of performance management, which we touched on earlier. This is needed to maintain performance and to fulfill our commitments to our stakeholders, especially our customers. This, however, also represents one of the primary sources of stress for managers. So we are aware that it is not um, necessarily the most simple thing to manage, but the reality is that we need to engage in discussion, in searching and reviewing our processes and arriving then at workable solutions. So we, we posit that to, to be effective, teleworking needs to be based on dialogue and cooperation between manager and worker, or between supervisor and worker. So for these reasons, managers and supervisors must accelerate efforts in developing and maintaining rapport with individuals and teams with continuous improvement as the goal. That's a requirement as we go forward. We know that everything now, we, all of us in every situation, we need to look at performance, we need to fine tune performance, and we need to improve performance as a goal on a day like by day basis. The manager may also engage in management by results. Studies indicate that an effective method for managing telecommuting, telecommuting staff is through a process called management by results, where the man, both the manager and the employee agree on a common productivity management, manage, measurement mechanism. Again, we can refer to our, our, our performance management process, a performance management tool, the PRDS, it can do a lot more than some persons think. These are easily captured where we have our, 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 our work objectives set out and the deliverables, the time frame by which these things are to be completed. This is a process where the manager and employee agree on a common measurement that includes identifying objectives, tasks, and milestones on monitoring and discussing progress without overly burdensome reporting demands on the employee, but still allowing for flexibility and autonomy to organize for the employee to organize his work without the manager constantly having, excuse me, to look over his shoulder, checking on his progress. And again, if you actively review the PRDS process, you will find that there's much to be gained uh, for this approach of managing by results. Another um, strategy, another action, some other actions that we may consider in relation to performance management and how we may adapt to get to the place we want to, which remember is for employee well-being coupled with productivity, is that we must be clear about the expected results. It has to be very clear, being as specific as possible beforehand about the expectations towards workers significantly reduces the potential for ambiguity and any possibility for, mis for misunderstanding. It also ensures timely, regular, and descriptive feedback by workers, sorry, feedback to workers by describing concisely what the worker did while focusing on those changes that will result in the most significant improvement to the task 
and will have the expected impact. Of course, positive feedback for a job well done is always appreciated by the employee. And remember this, a good word also spreads among other employees and may have a cumulatively positive impact on them as well. And wherever possible for your teleworking employees, please use video enabled calls, especially in relation to the discussion on sensitive performance related issues. It really is important for you to be able to observe body language and for the employee to be able to observe your body language as well. And this helps to this helps in, in the entire process and in terms of getting the, the, the message over because we all know those those body language cues are as important sometimes as the spoken word, sometimes even more so, I would imagine. So let's move on now to our third, our third area, that of communication, and, and which many persons will tell you is probably the most important. Teams that work remotely, I should say teams and persons that work remotely, often face significant communication challenges, more so than those who operate in a face-to-face -face environment. And this becomes necessary, especially because of the heavy reliance on electronic communication. If we are working in the same physical space, it is a lot easier for various communication in various scenarios. I may pass you in the corridor. I may pass you in the lunchroom. I may pass you by the water cooler. But if I am in this building in Warrens and the employee is at home, it's really difficult to, 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 to you know, be calling so very often for that informal communication that is the heartbeat of teams. Teams rely very much on that uh, informal and very constant communication. So in this type of environment that we are in now, we know that for the telecommunicating empl teleworking employee, the electronic communication is used to foster collaboration, trust and transparency. But do research documents very positively as well. It is well documented by research that the degree of separation and professional isolation also increases for team members who spend more and more time out of the office, out of the office setting. So, and, and also what research has, has shown is that collaboration among teams slowly erodes as by constantly communicating via electronic means, workers tend to share less information with their colleagues and in some cases may also have difficulty interpreting and understanding the information that they receive. Because remember their context, uh, 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 an employee who is working, let's say, from at home and supervising two small children, the context is totally different than if he is at his desk in that professional setting. And sometimes it's very difficult to, to transition from one, one role to the other, thereby limiting the, the, the quality and understanding of that message. So some of the strategies that we may um, use in relation to communication deficiencies. You know that a full-time teleworker, a full-time teleworking schedule presents the real risk of social isolation, as we said earlier. And every effort must be made to help these employees stay connected, especially with their supervisor, but also with colleagues and the organization as a whole. Believe it or not, here in Barbados, throughout the world and here in Barbados as well, there are already many private sector organizations who are introducing and increasing both formal and informal opportunities for workers to be able to connect with the organization while operating a teleworking schedule. Only yesterday morning, I was speaking with a young family member who told me she was about to, to go to a, a, an independence quiz. And as the, con the conversation unfolded, she was conducting this quiz 
from her living room. And she was conducting this quiz for all members of the organization who at this point, I was told, have more than 50% of their staff on teleworking schedules. So the example is there. And certainly, as we examine our own experience, we may also learn other skills through networking and through interaction with our colleagues in other, uh, in, in other entities. I have a, a, a manager who always says, there is no need to reinvent the wheel and we may benefit from the experience and the experiences of others. So some of the actions that may be used to mitigate a situation involving deficient communication involved the setting up of a centralized repository of all the major changes and updates to internal policies and processes. One of the challenges for employers when workers are, are, are working remotely is in keeping everyone effectively informed about the latest challenges in the organization. A centralized system will certainly assist where the worker, uh, sorry, a centralized repository where the worker can access everything in, in one place. We can also establish communication norms. Earlier, somebody said we should have a, a, a regular weekly meeting maybe in a teleworking environment you might want to switch that a little bit to maybe um once a day it doesn't have to be a long meeting it doesn't have to be an hour it can be just a mere five minutes or ten minutes just to reflect on what has happened before and maybe to consider what is the plan uh, for today so establish communication norms um, this is important especially when it comes to communicating new standards to establish clarity and this includes people's preferred response time, which, which may change. It may change depending on the circumstance. If, if, if the employee, let's say, is um, at home um, because of a parent, let's say, with dementia, those, those, his, his, his reality may change from moment to moment. So the, the, the preferred response time and, and also the flap. Good morning, everyone. We have experienced um, a technical difficulty. Mr. Sobers will now continue from here. Hold on, please. Yes, thank you. Thank you, Laura. Thank you, colleagues, for your patience. So I, I, I think I was at the point where I was pointing out Uh, that a full-time teleworking schedule presents the risk of real social isolation for the employee and that we as supervisors and managers must make every effort to help teleworkers stay connected with their supervisor especially but also with colleagues and the organization as a whole and I was pointed I was pointing out I was pointing out that um, here in Barbados, there are already many private sector organizations 
who are introducing informal and formal opportunities for workers to connect while they are working remotely. So some of the actions that, some of the actions that may help to mitigate this situation include the setting up of a centralized repository of all the major changes and updates to the internal processes and policies. This represents a significant challenge for uh, employers. And that is in keeping workers effectively informed about the latest challenges within the organization. And this, by keeping them involved and keeping them informed, it helps to reduce that isolation and improve their connection um, with the business. Another one would be establishing communication norms. And we, 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 we suggest that it is important to communicate any new standards that establish clarity in communication, such as the preferred uh, response time, because as I did indicate, as I was indicating, person's reality also may change uh, from time to time, depending on their own circumstances, as well as to clarify the virtual platform through which we will communicate. And that we should also include the social aspects of work. And wherever possible, to create opportunities for persons to connect uh, outside of their work obligations. And we should not, we should not underestimate this question of the social aspects of work. I became aware many years ago where a, a gentleman was forced to retire. He retired compulsorily at age 65. So you know I'm talking some years ago. And when he was told that he had to retire, he asked, well, what does retirement mean? I, I, I don't know anything about retirement. All of my friends are at work. What am I going to retire and do? But of course, the law had to be satisfied and the man was retired. And within six months, a man that was previously fit and healthy had passed away. He, all of his friends, he said, and maybe we say that you shouldn't be like that and you should not have your life so tied to, to your work. But remember, each person's reality is different. And for some persons, the majority of their friendships, so on, are with persons at work. So we must take that into consideration. So in these circumstances, it is important that we, as supervisors and managers, encourage officers to make full use of the entire spectrum of available communication options. Allow them to gravitate toward the tools they find easiest to use and most effective as well. We should ensure that our officers know when and how they can reach us, their direct supervisors, and use clear communication to identify the best times and the best ways in which we can get in touch um, with these officers who are working remotely. Finally, there is a role for us in offering encouragement and support. For many of us, the shift from working in the office to working remotely has been abrupt. Very, very abrupt, uh, some may say. We therefore need to acknowledge stress. We need to listen to workers' anxieties and concerns and empathize with their difficulties. Not every person is going to be open about identifying and communicating emotional or um, other mental health challenges. And we have to be wary and we have to be careful because as we know today, 
mental health is a rather serious illness that restricts us as a, as a country and as a workforce more than we realized previously. So I must let you know in, in regard to communication that the Learning and Development Directorate has recently developed a set of guidelines for communications and boundaries. This document outlines standards developed to facilitate communication in a professional and respectful manner as we continue the process of developing the human resources of the public service. It is available to any ministry or department or agency and may be used as a template as you develop your own standard. This we can make available and you just need to let us know at the end of this webinar, whether you want to have sight of that document. So let us focus now on training and development. This new work environment that we are in with flexible work at its, at its core requires a constant assessment and indeed reassessment of our previously used working habits, as well as the learning of new skills and approaches. These are essential prerequisites for both managers and workers in the new workplace that is evolving before our very eyes. As managers and supervisors who are required to play a support role as well as, a, as to lead your team. It is important to develop new skills or indeed to strengthen existing ones that will enable you to, among other things, manage our current situation better. We did mention earlier that continuous improvement should always be a goal. And we too, as managers and supervisors, should be seeking to develop our skills in management and in leading our employees through this period of rapid change and constant uncertainty. It would always enable us to safeguard employee well-being, as you mentioned earlier, supporting employees to disconnect from their work and have reasonable working time arrangements. So just because the person is working remotely, it doesn't mean they're available at 8 p.m. It may not even mean that they're available at 8.30 a.m. Because if you reason for being aware is to support uh, a, a, an, Ill, an ill family member, the person may very well have to seek medical attention. And we all know that if they are attending uh, a polyclinic or the QEH, then it may not be possible for them to interact with us at 8.30 in the morning. We need to maintain agreed standards, to establish agreed standards and to, and to maintain them, to insist that, that they are met except in ex exceptional circumstances. And we need to try wherever possible to assist and to help motivate our employees. Not I say to assist because the worker must also have some intrinsic motivation, but we need to be part of the process and to create the environment in which this employee can, can flour flourish and perform and also one that facilitates active and constant communication so that we are aware of changes so that, and, and be able to assist uh, the employee. And then we need to help workers to navigate the different working modalities well at home for all the reasons that we identified. Change is constant, the circumstances are constantly changing and you know, we may need to adjust and adapt wherever possible. So um, maybe I can have your, 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 your feedback, your input. So let me ask you this question. What strategies can you think of that may be implemented to satisfy this requirement of training and development? What can, what can you think of? Help me. Let me see your responses, please. I'm, I'm viewing the chat. I'm looking for your responses in chat. 
What strategies can be implemented to satisfy the training and, and development requirements while working remotely, both for the manager and for the worker? Well, let, let, me, let me share mine with you then. Various organizations, international and local, have implemented a range of strategies to in, ensure that teleworkers have the requisite skills and knowledge to master the changing business environment. Some of those which we, as public officers, may benefit from are conducting regular surveys on the challenges and needs of teleworkers. Once again, our performance management tool um, may accommodate this, this discussion, but it needs not be, it doesn't have to be a formal um, um, interaction. It's certainly the supervisor in constant communication with the staff can have individual sessions, can have group sessions and conduct his, serve, his, his, his research in that way. Could always also prioritize the types of training that are most relevant at this time. For example, leadership skills, time management skills, and communication skills. So as managers, we should be particularly equipped to effectively manage a remote team. And so, may benefit in areas such as managing remote teams. It, is, it requires, as we, as we are learning, skills, uh, skill sets other than managing in a face-to-face -face environment, leading teams through a crisis, effective communication uh, with a remote team, including, including coaching and mentoring. And of course, Yes. Yes, coaching, coaching and management. And to further support you and your team, you may also want to source or offer training sessions that focus on soft skills and the behavior, behavioral aspects of teleworking, such as mindfulness and, and time management. So we are clear when, when we speak of time management, but just to clarify that mi mindfulness, it refers to a, a state of mind, observing one's thoughts and feelings without judging them as either good or bad, therefore helping employees to remain grounded and to be used as a tool to help them to avoid self-criticism and judgment while identifying and managing difficult emotions. Remember, we are still talking about, especially for the employee who's working remotely, who doesn't have the, the benefit of the social interaction at work, who could very well be at home with um, small children for a large chunk of the day. And so it is important to help that person to remain um, grounded by helping them maybe to access uh, training or some activity. May very well be, may very well be um, a, a course in yoga or something like that to help them to remain grounded and, and free of judgmental emotions. And so you also want to be mindful, mind, that mindfulness is to observe, to avoid observing labor thoughts and feelings. For the some approaches that we may consider for the future. It is acknowledged by all that the COVID-19 pandemic will be with us for a long time. And furthermore, that consideration must be given to teleworking beyond the pandemic. Indeed, the Ministry of the Public Service anticipated this development and I can tell you that the flexible work policy that has been circulated recently is a clear indication of this, that we do anticipate that telecommunicating as well as those other schedules that have been approved 
we do anticipate that they will be actively used within the public service. In light of this, it is important for us then to review constantly, review constantly the lessons that we have learned to date. Because we, we will need to, to evaluate those. It is, it is as, the, as the environment unfolds, as the business environment unfolds, we will have to revise going forward. It is important that you and your direct reports discuss and agree how you made the transition to teleworking and to use those experiences to modify or initiate new practices and policies. Essentially, we are saying that we, will we have to continue to evolve. We cannot remain static. So we have to constantly review the lessons learned and, uh, and, and move forward. We have to evaluate on an ongoing basis the experience of your direct reports with teleworking. However you choose to interact with your employees, whether it be face-to-face, um, -face, in a focus group, in a survey or a meeting, sorry, through a survey or in a meeting, ensure that their voices are heard and that their opinions are considered in any future initiatives. It is important to involve the workers. Sometimes you get very solid um, suggestions and ideas from your workers. So please involve your staff in the decision-making process. And you as the manager or supervisor also need to regularly assess your own learning needs and to have discussions with your direct reports about their own learning needs so that training can be sourced and or developed for the specific needs. And of course, you have your partners here at the Learning and Development Directorate. So ladies and gentlemen, this brings us to the end of the presentation. We've covered some key aspects of an overall framework affecting the well-being and performance of individuals and teams. I will now hand the session over to Sheldine for her input. Over to you, Thank, thank you so much, Wayne, uh, for providing this timely information that concerns us as human resource practitioners, whether managers or supervisors. And I know we're beginning to give thought to our approaches in supporting our direct reports in this new teleworking environment and how best it can be achieved. And of course, at this time, we want to turn our attention to some of the questions and comments from or participants that they may have for you. And while we wait for those to come up, uh, Wayne, there were two responses which caught my eye uh, in response to one of your earlier questions when you asked, uh, what are some of the challenges managers and supervisors face as it relates to managing teleworking employees? And there was a response which uh, which went like, not sure how much time is spent working. So I sense that a manager may be concerned about, well, you know, I can't really ascertain how much time that employee is spent working. Uh, another issue which popped up was, and I'm quoting, balancing tasks where persons tend to be present in office with the safety of persons are we, as we are in another jurisdiction. Uh, we recognize, of course, that the, they are public officers working in consulates in various jurisdictions where the containment of, of COVID uh, may not be as successful as those measures taken in our own jurisdiction. Uh, so how do we respond to those two concerns? For the first question, it is very important that we agree the performance standards beforehand. Once we agree on those performance standards, because remember, according to the flexible work policy, the arrangement is supposed to be reduced to writing. And both the employee and the permanent secretary or his representative should agree in writing to this to the schedule. Now then, if the employee does not perform what has been agreed, then it 
may be treated as any other disciplinary matter, or it might very well be addressed through the, the performance management reports. So maybe, maybe um, I'd like to encourage the participants to, to um, have a look at the flexible work arrangements policy and if for, for the public service. And if they don't have a copy, maybe they should contact us at the EHR policy and staffing uh, directorate. Because the, once the employee um, is working or is scheduled to work at home, then what is important is not so much the time that he spends on the task, but if he completes the task in, in the assigned time. Remember we said earlier that it moves now to a results-based kind of situation. So that's what I, I would say to that, that the, the, the manager needs to look at what is agreed and to ensure that the agreement is maintained. Uh, the second question, um, can you just repeat it for me, please? Certainly, balancing tasks where persons need to be present in office with the safety of persons uh, who may be in a jurisdiction where the, the containment of the virus may not be as successful as, as in our own jurisdiction. Mm. So it's a question of balancing tasks. Yes, and again, this is where the question of, of trust and communication comes in, where we're looking for meaningful solutions. I'm not quite sure, uh, I, ca I can't visualize in my mind the, this, this jurisdiction, but I'm thinking that it really is for the two parties to find a balance that can work. By, by implementing the flexible work policy, the um, policy makers have indicated that we recognize that we cannot continue at 15 to 4.30 in, in the office five days a week. We recognize that. The world has changed, circumstances have changed. And it really is through communication and through meaningful collaboration, uh, the responsibility of the two parties to find a workable solution in that circumstance. Thank you, Wayne. And I see there are some comments which support your perspective in the chat. I think the key is trust and looking at results, says Diana. Uh, the crisis has provided us with opportunities to rethink how we work, says Juliet. So I think we have some persons out there who are, you know, having the same train of thought. Here's another question for you. Is it not better for the manager to prepare a draft work plan which is shared with the employee for his or her input? The manager has the holistic view of the entity's goals for the specified period. Well, that can as well, and it would depend a lot on the, the particular situation. In my case, I don't very much that my boss would do that. I think that my boss would expect me to bring a proposal to her, but that may occur. I remember we said earlier, depending on the, the skills of the employee, depending on the role that they perform as well. So it very well depends on the peculiar circumstances. It can work like that, but we say, and we are clear, that if the employee has an opportunity to input into the plan, that it is easier to facilitate uh, buy-in, easier to facilitate implementation. And certainly once the employee agrees, then the onus is on him to satisfy the requirements of, of, the, of the plan. If, if it is handed down, he may very well say, but, but did I agree? This is your view. But I didn't think that I could get this due for the first place. And remember the power imbalance in the employment relationship. The senior manager always has more power in that relationship than the junior employee. And he may very well agree without being convinced that it is achievable. So yes, it can work, but ideally it should be arrived at through discussion with the objectives uh, in mind and the peculiarities of the situation. Would you not say, Wayne, that this brings into focus uh, or the, the culture within our, our respective workplaces and communication, and perhaps the onus is on us to, to promote change for the better? Yes, I certainly agree with that. Uh, we are quite hierarchical in nature, and um, in many instances, 
we use a top-down method in communicating and, and establishing standards and so on. But there's no harm in changing. We said in our presentation, let us review our performance, let us engage in continuous review and then use what we have learned to fashion a better future. So yes, we have worked prior to this year, we have worked largely speaking, except for some departments, we've worked at 15 to 4.30, but now that's changed. And depending on the particular rule, because remember, flexible work does not lend itself to every single job in the public service. So again, there really ought to be discussion and there ought to be um, uh, collaboration. I, I should say that the, the policy that I spoke of earlier was arrived at after wide consultation among employees' representatives as well. You know, so again, this was not a, a, a top-down policy. This was developed with input and their suggestions were accepted and changes made as needed. So uh, that's the kind of uh, collaboration that we are speaking about. Thank you, Anne. I, I see Wendy supports your view. Uh, she says, and I just lost her comment. Ah, there we go. It mm -hmm. depends on that communication taking place between the parties, she says. And, and what I'd like to add is that it should be meaningful communication. Mm -hmm. Not communication just for the sake of communicating, but I'm talking about looking for solutions and discussing solutions. There's no harm in having a problem. We always have problems, but there are always solutions available. And that's what we urge, that's what we encourage through meaningful communication to achieve the objectives that we want for our workplaces. For sure. So there's, there's one other question and a comment I'll share with you, Wayne. Uh, that question is, how feasible are some of these examples given in terms of the strategies? And there's a comment made, there are some managers who provide strategies that only serve to alienate. Your thoughts? Well, I'll, I'll start by saying this. We are not a perfect organization. And we will not achieve change tomorrow just because we say today that we want to change. It's a process. And we have to um, break down uh, the barriers. Uh, my background is in industrial relations. And we know that in the 1930s, that Bajans could not join the trade union. And it didn't happen overnight. There were the, the, the disturbances, the riots in 1937. And then it took about three or four years before the appropriate legislation was put in place for persons to join trade unions or for trade unions to be legally established. It didn't happen overnight, even though some people lost their lives and we are thankful for the sacrifices that they've made. Similarly, in our situation, I wish, I, I mean, servers so wish that we could change um, by 2021. We're talking a large organization with a few thousand posts with different types of management approaches in some of these ministries and departments. And while we have a policy, we know it's not going to be implemented in the same way in each, in each um, organization. We wish it could. I wish everybody could see it like me and implement it like me for tomorrow. But we recognize that is not going to happen. It will take some time and we need to be patient, but we need to chip away at the situation that we have that may not serve our best interests in the same way that our forefathers chipped away at the situation in the 1930s until we got to a point that we are at with quite advanced labor legislation on a number of, 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 a number of critical areas. In, 1960, in, 19, in 1970, at the start of the 70s, a woman had no right to maternity leave with pay. You know, a woman who told her employer in 1970 that she was pregnant, it was tantamount to telling him that I resigned. Now, we, 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 we take those things for granted now. But these changes were achieved over time. Let us transform the service. Let us transform the way that we work. If we can do it tomorrow, fine. If we have to do it over time, let us be resolute and let us work toward the changes. Let us seek to overcome the obstacles that, that are there to the, the, the changes from modern approaches to the way that we organize work. 
good points to reflect on, Wayne. And there's one officer who's sharing her experience of teleworking. I personally telework in the mornings and I'm office based in the afternoons. I also supervise someone who's looking after two young children and teleworking three, three days per week. I agree with the need to regularly Day, uh, daily briefly communicate with my supervisee to see how she's coping etc they have added that uh having been exposed to the inf information in this webinar they're beginning to see some deficiencies and, and i hope i hope that that person will be able to help their supervisor to revise the supervisor's management management practice. You know, I would like to encourage her to continue her approach, but sometimes we do have to manage our manager. It's not the easiest thing that, that we do sometimes. It's, and share your experiences. Share your experiences. Maybe in time to come, her supervisor or, or his supervisor will come around and, and adapt the approach to managing. It must. We cannot continue as we have been in 1965. The world has changed. And I'm seeing some advice from one of our colleagues. Paula says, empowering officers is important. Yes, certainly, uh, certainly. But again, that depends on the approach. It often depends on the approach of the leadership of the, of the organization. Um, many of us who, who have studied organizational behavior and so on, we know about the theory X manager and the theory Y manager. We know about the participating manager, and we know about the task focus manager. So, you know, unfortunately, we don't have um, a, 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 a particular management style across all organizations, nor can we legislate a particular management style. But like I said, um, you know, through awareness and through constant interaction, it is something that I think we can address uh, over time. Thank you, Wayne. And Juliet is sharing her sentiments with us. She's happy to be accessing this information virtually as she is, I believe, working in one of our consulates somewhere in the world. Yes, Juliet, we serve you as well. We don't leave out our public officers who are working in other jurisdictions. And we're happy to have had you uh, share with us today. I'm looking out for additional comments and questions. I'm not seeing any at the moment, but as we prepare to, to wrap up, I want to invite our participants to go ahead and drop in the chat some of those uh, most, some of your most valuable learning points today. We'd be really happy to hear your thoughts. So just drop quickly in the chat some of those highlights, some of that information that stayed with you today. We look out for it. And I see as we wait for those uh, highlights, Wayne, there's one question that is drawing me in. These work plans prepared well, those work plans prepared while teleworking would be separate or more detailed than the agreed upon PRDS individual work plans. So is there a difference because the officer is teleworking? Well, it ought not to be, but again, that is a point for um, discussion between the supervisor and the, and the and the employee, but they really should complement. They should not um, be far removed. It shouldn't be. It, there's no need for a totally a totally new plan. But it, it should mm -hmm. flow from what has already been established. Thank you, Wayne. And Diana has shared her highlight from today. She notes trust and communication is key. You can continue to to place your comments in. We look out for them. But it seems that this is all the time we have for our webinar today. Uh, Wayne, it's been a real pleasure working with you. 
we want to thank you for today's intervention. We are, we are certainly enlightened about some of those challenges of the teleworking environment. But we are also aware of some of those ways in which we can support our teleworking colleagues. And to you, the participants, we want to thank you for joining us, for your interaction. And we want to encourage you to share the information you were exposed to today with your colleagues. A special thank you to our production team here at LDD. Please look out for our follow-up email, which will contain a copy of the recording of today's webinar and a PDF copy of the slides so that you can review any information that you have missed. We also invite you to subscribe to our YouTube channel to review recent webinars and to be updated on any new content posted. And of course, we will share with you via email that communications guidelines document, which uh, we, we, that document which we spoke of earlier. So on behalf of the Director General and the rest of the team, we want to thank you all for joining us. I'm Sheldine Santuali, wishing you a wonderful Independence Weekend ahead. Goodbye for now.